may go. Uh, wait a minute. We get. Uh, there we hey, go. Handheld should be. It's. All right. We got. You got power coming through here, but. Oh, yeah, that could be. Is that over? That's right. Probably never turned it on. So, as a good shepherd, as a pastor, and the leadership that have the oversight of the church, we should be leading the flock a certain direction. You know, if, if you have somebody preach a certain thing that kind of leads the flock <laughs> here, and then you got somebody else that comes in, and they're preaching something else that's going way off into another direction... That could create some confusion. Not that it's not a good word that's being preached, but I noticed that that when those that preach, <coughs> it's amazing how it just lines up. And it's not that they, I, I've talked with James, I've talked with Brother Rick, I've talked different ones that, that uh, Sister Sue and others that have spoke, they don't take and... Uh, well, Pastor, what direction are you trying to take the church? Because I want to preach along that. They preach what God puts in their heart. God knows what he's doing. Holy Spirit knows when he's talking. Amen. So, And he doesn't speak with a forked tongue. So there should be continuity and there should be a flow and there should be a direction. So it just... It blesses me when I hear different ones preach that it just goes right in line and then God gives me a message and it just continuation from what Brother Rick and Brother James had just preached and you know it's it's headed it's headed somewhere, folks. It's headed somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now, this here, I got a couple of chairs here and I, I it's gonna take and represent a bed and, and you'll see when I'll have the opening scripture and such. But before I read it, I just want to do something so when I when I do read it, it's like, yeah, yeah, you can really visualize this. Could you imagine that this, here I am, a grown man. I'm not very, I'm not like Brother Nels, except over six foot tall, or Brother James, and such there, and Cameron stretching right out there, these guys here, and making me feel good and short. I'm just... Five seven on a good day, and uh, so I, I don't really need a whole uh, 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 long bench there to be able to lay and stretch out on here and such. But I'll tell you, if this was my bed, I probably wouldn't be very comfortable. And if this was my covering, could you imagine as I'm trying to on a cold day? And if I had to sleep on this, if this was my bed and this is all I had to cover, you know, now, could you imagine Brother Nels, or James, trying to, this is their covering right here. That's what you had to keep you warm, and that's that was your bed. Well, no, that's not, you could say, well, I might as well just take and lean up against the wall and stand up and try to sleep, try to, that, that'd that be like a torture rack. Yeah, I'd try to do that. In the airport. Yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, at an airport. <laughs> Anybody has had to try to sleep in an airport, yeah. They know, and these little blankets that they give you there to try to cover you up with and stuff there, and they're just big enough to make a cape there to try to take and fly around there. And the, <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Anyways, you, you'd have you'd had to been there to get that joke yeah, and stuff. To, you'd had to been there. Yes, right. Some of us were there, and it's like yes. <laughs> oh. So let's take and uh, turn to Isaiah. One verse we're going to take and read. Let us stand as we read together. Let us stand together. Isaiah twenty-eight. 
20. And it reads, For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your word. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you just guide me in everything that I say, that it may have impact, that it, we will remember, we will take this and we will act upon it, and we will examine ourselves. Those that hear this message will examine and that we would not settle, get complacent, will not, that we will refuse to remain in a bed that's too short to stretch out in and a covering that's not big enough to wrap ourselves up in. So I thank you, Holy Spirit. Speak to our hearts this morning. I can deliver this message, Lord, in my own strength. But I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So I lean upon your word, Lord God, and that anointing in your Holy Spirit that empowers me, anoints me to bring forth a word so that the hearer can hear and run with that which they hear. Apply it in their lives and share it with others. And Father, we lift you up because, Lord, it's so important. For your word says, if you'll be lifted up, all men will be drawn unto you. So I thank you, Lord God, as we continue to decrease you will increase, and you will be lifted up. You will be the focus that all people will look to you and give you the glory whom it is due in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, the title of my message is just simply, It's Time for a Bigger Bed. It's Time for a Bigger Bed. So, That's the bed and that's the blanket that a lot of Christians are taking sleeping in. The blanket, that little, uh, it looks like it's a, a dish towel. Yeah, it's about that size there and that's what they're using to try to cover themselves up in. Spiritually speaking, because see, you can grow if you get the right nutrition, the right food, you can grow and you will grow. So a lot of times people don't see certain things happening. They don't, uh, you know, they... They want to hear certain things and whatever. I, I can remember, I well, back up a bit. I, I remember there was a person that said, uh, well, Pastor, we're, you know, nothing against you and Pam. We love you dearly and stuff, but we believe it's time to move on because, well, you're not, we don't feel you're preaching the meat. We feel that you're preaching just milk. And I says, well, I've got to preach what people are capable of of receiving, that they're capable to take it and apply it. See, these folks had been a Christian for a long time, so they figured they need, they, they should because they've been a Christian a number of years. So by all means, because of their stature, they should take and be having some meat. But the thing is, is they, they couldn't handle it. If that was presented. Because even though they had that said that their actions with that which I was giving them it was not being applied and such. So what you got to do is you got to take and where are the people are at in your congregation and such. So you got to be careful and such. You realize you got people in different levels and they walk and such. So you got to make sure that you got a little bit of something for everybody. And that can be challenging at times because there's some, you, you're giving them the baby bottle over there. Okay, and, and then there's another one there. You're, you're, you're giving them something a little bit of solid there. And then you got that other one there and stuff. There's a, throwing them a good steak, you know, and, ah, boy, they're really just tearing right into that like a, well, I, just, I was going to say like a Tasmanian devil, you know, such there. But, uh, you know, they just, 
teeth are over right in that tin. Boy, they're ready for that. And they're so grateful that they got a little steak to chew on for a change. But you got to have that balance. But sometimes it can be that it can be a Sunday and such there that people, someone may be having a bad day or whatever. You know, spiritually speaking, in their statue, they're all big there, you know. You, you'd think that they would have a big blanket, to not, but you got to, you ever have time that you just physically, you're not, feel, you know, so what you, what you change, what you eat. Because, well, you're not quite feeling great. So we get times like that there that we know that, ah, I can't handle a steak today. And that's all right. We understand. God understands that. But as a whole, People have a tendency of reverting back to that little bed and the little blanket. I mean, how many, you know, people, you know, or I should say that kids, they get to a certain age and it's time to take, you know, I call it the Linus blanket. You know, they, they just got that, and they're so attached to that. You see that with kids, and then there comes a point of time, you need a bigger blanket. It's time to get a bigger blanket to wrap yourself up in. Now, I believe that the bed represents the, the maturity that God wants to bring in a Christian's life. Now, you remember we preached a, a series about the bed. And this scripture, I could go that direction with that. That message, I, I just, I, God has been speaking that back to me over and over again myself. And I know someday I'll probably go back to that and, and kind of add, and this probably will be a scripture that I'll put in there because there's something about the, a bed. Anytime you see bed mentioned in the word of God, there's some great significance. A bed is very important. If you've got a bed that's too short or you got a bed that is too narrow or a blanket that is too narrow, too short, or a bed that is all lumpy and it may be plenty big enough, but it's just springs coming up out of it or whatever and such, you're not going to take and have a very good night's sleep. Bed is very important to have. That's why they charge what they charge. You can't tell me that... You know, there's uh, $1,500 there for a mattress and such like that there, that, there, that there's even $500 worth of material and labor in that thing. It's on a, a assembly line, such there. They just got, you know, and they're putting all that stuff together. And, and who knows? I don't know how. I didn't research how many mattresses they could take and put out in an hour and such there. But there's no way. But they know that that bed is important. And if you want a good night's sleep and such, you'll pay the big bucks. They, because it's that important. The bed. But in a Christian walk, we don't take it now. Just we let's let's just keep the small bed. Let's just keep the the little blanket. That's fine. I'm familiar with it. I'm comfortable with it. Let's just stay with that. God wants us to take and and, and to be able to stretch out. He wants us to take and grow to full maturity in Him. He wants us to have that blanket is, is a type, speaking of a, His covering. His covering. See, it kind of represents our relationship with Him. <laughs> yeah, I got Jesus here. Yeah, He's my covering. Remember, He's supposed to be a covering. Wrap yourself. Well, if you wrap a baby up and such like that there, all you could see when someone wraps a baby and they get it all wrapped, all you can see is their little face because they got them just all wrapped up completely. Wrapped up. See, and that's what God wants you to have a blanket. He wants you to have a covering that's big enough to fully get wrapped up in. But we get comfortable with that little blanket that we got that's way too small, and we love that. Ah, yes, it's so, it's so familiar, so familiar with that blanket. And that bed, yeah, that bed and such there, I, I, 
I'm so familiar with this bed and such there, and it's, but that, that thing could have all kinds of problems and squeaks and this and that, but it's my bed, and I've, I've slept in it for so long, and, you know, well, but it's time for a new bed. It's time for a bigger bed. Because I tell you, if a Christian is not growing the way that they should be growing, their statue could be, you know, they, they could be growing and they, they may be tall and they may be big. But their mentality, their social skills, there's, a, you know, there, there is, we, you know, we, there is a, 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 a community, a, a group of people that are out there. They mature as far as their body and such there, but there's some other things that didn't quite come together to the maturity to match the size of their body. And they're going to need some special attention. So they need some special, the work with them and such like that require quite a bit more of attention. And see, that's where it is with Christians, that they require more maintenance and attention because their body may have developed, but their spiritual level hasn't. Just like somebody whose body has developed, but their mentality hasn't developed. It's still back maybe at 7, 8-year-old, 10-year-old, and such like that there. And they require a lot of attention, and there's a lot of work. Certain things they're not able to do in the community and such. Certain tasks and stuff like that there they can't do and such there. But then there are some things that they're very good at and can do just as well as anyone else. But it's usually limited to one or two things, and they're good at it. They don't need to be... Uh, supervised and looked over their shoulder, but everything else they need to be uh, prompted a number of times, encouraged, and you got to kind of be there, and sometimes you got to be right with them, walk them through. And we know there's plenty of folks out there that are like that. Now, they're still part of the community. We don't treat them like they're, uh, you know, like they got a plague or something like that there. Treat them with dignity and respect and such. You know, but when it comes to the spiritual realm and such like that, what happens is there's no dignity and respect that happens a lot of times. It's like totally disregard, don't work with them, don't be outcast. No, I don't care less or even in my church, such like that. They need the, that special attention. And a good pastor and a good ministry will take and do that. But the thing is, God wants to bring them up out of that. Get them out. So that they, their maturity level, they don't, they're don't they not going to want a small bed like that. They're not going to want a little tiny blanket like that. They want fully wrapped up in Jesus as complete as their covering. And how miserable will you be if you had to take and spend a few days in a bed that's only that long, in a blanket like that there, in cold winter night, you're going to be most miserable. Guarantee. And guess what? You're going to make everybody else miserable that's around you. And see, this is what happens in, in a lot of ministries in such there, and this is why we got to be careful that we don't find ourselves in this type of predicament, that we just are complacent and content with this little bed. And so well, let's, let's go on here quickly. So for a healthy growth, you, you put a big, big person in a, you know, and try to shove them in a crib and, and such like that there, or a, or a, a child that's going, a lot of times you'll have, uh, uh, you go from a crib, uh, you, well, you go from a bassinet just out there, like, you know, and then you go to the, you know, or that little small, Little thing. Then you put them in a crib, and they go from a crib to a junior bed, and then from that junior bed there and stuff to a, a, you know, to a 
maybe a full full size bed. You know, I see a twin bed. Yeah, twin bed, mat there, full size bed, queen king. You know, depending on your size and such like that here. And that for good healthy growth, you you need that. Who would who would take and and taking uh, a five year old and keep him in a crib? A 10-year-old, uh, you know, keep him in a crib. Or somebody that's, you know, that's six foot, and you just got them in a twin bed. They're over six foot and, you know, broad-shouldered and, you know, a big individual, and they keep them in a twin bed. Yeah, it'd be some miserable. And, and the thing is, it's going to have effect on their growth. So another thing is that the ministry and the leadership and stuff's got to make sure that there is a bed they can stretch out in that's available. If they want it, it's there. They're presenting it, and, it, and the thing is, it is a choice. Some people, it don't matter what you, you can talk about and preach about, and I've done that, and you know that, about the necessity and how important the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, but guess what? They want that small bed, and they're content with this little blanket. There are those that have been saved a long time, but they're just the same, you know, year after year. There's no change. They that now they look, they know how to say the words. They'll be at a number of functions. They'll work. They'll help out at anything. Oh, you need any help? They'll, they'll help out. They, uh, and uh, they can be, a, seem like a great example of a, a Christian and such, but they're shallow. They're shallow. Their roots don't go very deep. They, they, they're just content. They're happy to stay right there in a small bed. You know, in a blanket they can't they can't wrap themselves up in. They're comfortable. They want that. They want to be catered to. They want it to be. If you don't take and say hello to them and say howdy, shake their hand, uh, do all that, and they're high, higher maintenance. They're very usually a more sensitive people because remember, if you're sleeping in a bed like that, you're going to be miserable, and everybody you're going to make everybody feel miserable around them. High maintenance, high maintenance Christians. See because. What happens is that as, the, as a child grows and they develop properly, they need less attention. Now, that doesn't mean they don't need attention. And such that they're all, We always have, even the way we, we grew up, we leave home, but guess what? We've got law enforcement. We've got, you know, government. We've got whatever, watch it. We still, you know, kind of keep us in check. We have that. And you have that in the natural how much more in the spiritual you still, it's not like you outgrow your pastor. Now, there's some that they've, well, I'll take it back. Now, there's some pastors that are, and their leadership is so shallow and such there that it is, that they only can bring them to so far, and then it's just, you know, they don't really offer, they don't know what to do with somebody that, man, is stretching right out there and, and got a blanket all wrapped right up and such like that there, and they don't, because they're really good at ministering to those that are on that little bed and the little blankie, they're great at that. They're a good pastor for that. They love, the, they love to get those phone calls. I need you, Pastor. I need you to pray. I, I need you. I need you. Yes. Yes. It, it, it's good. Yes. I need you. You need me. Please, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that they just cannot function unless they, if the pastor don't talk to them at least once a week or a couple times a week, I've got, you know, I've got an individual and such that calls me just about every day. Not, they don't, they don't, they visit here from time to time and such like that here. But, you know, and I, I, God bless them. Anyways, I minister the best I can to, and I, I've had to use wisdom because, man, that individual will use up. I, in other words, I'll have, I won't have anything for the congregation if I tended to all the needs that are there, that are great, because they've been saved for a long time, this individual, but they're, that's the bed that they're laying on, and that's the blanket they were trying to wrap up in. See, high maintenance. See, as you mature, it should be, it, but don't get me wrong. Now, there are times, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call on somebody. I'm going to say, hey, I need agreement in prayer. I need, so th that's, not, that's healthy. You do, just as a, a good, uh, healthy adult and such. Sometimes it's just something that's too heavy for them to lift. They need help. There's something that is just financially, it's like, man, if I had some assistance and, and from time to time, hey, you know, I'll help you out here. 
Uh, you, you know, we're in situations that are like that. Uh, that's, that's normal. So, but when it's repeatedly, they need help. They need help many different ways. And, and you lay it out for them, you know, and guess what? It seems that they're just saying it's in a, that cycle over and over and over and over again. No matter what you're laying, because, you know, they're, they're, they settle for this bed. They just seem like they don't want to get out of that bed and stretch out. And, because, see, you may start out like that, dip, but you should move up and graduate to a bigger bed. Too many. And see, for the signs and wonders to be done, souls getting saved, discipled, seeing the power of God work in our midst, that comes when you start stretching out. That comes when you start stretching out, and that comes when you start wrapping yourself up in Jesus. It will happen. It will happen. But the thing is, is there is that, that there's that pull. You never see. Remember that Jesus couldn't do many miracles because of their unbelief? Folks, in our midst, there may be those. Remember, I know this is hard. This is hard. I ain't singling out anybody. You know, it's that old saying, shoe fits. It, hey, man, I tell you, you make sure you get the shoe. You make sure you put the pair on and such there because if it fits you, you better, you know, and do something. Stretch out. You stretch out. God God will make sure that your bed will be big enough. After you stretch out as big and much as you want, and you get that, but he'll make sure. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. But the thing is, remember, they couldn't enter into the promised land because why? Their unbelief. Jesus couldn't do many miracles because why? Their unbelief. They, see, they, they were content with, if I was back in Egypt, the little little blankie, a little bed. Oh, back in Egypt. See, they were content, you know, when things were all going, weren't going the way, and, 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 and you heard them, you know, how many, wah, 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 to, to Moses. They grumbled and complained. and so, A whole generation had to die off in the wilderness before that. So, folks, when they were in one mind, one mind, one mind, folks, in Acts, we, we wonder why and such like that, and we try to, it comes right down. That we, and there again, don't, don't go, yeah, yeah, it's those folks that stayed home today. Those are the ones. No, we got to, you know, we got to really make sure we examine ourselves. It's not up to us to look, and that one's keeping me back. Maybe it's this one over here. Well, maybe it's you. Amen. We've got to take and such. we got to examine ourselves. Beautiful testimony there that, that uh, uh, Brother Nels gave and such like that there because I've been right there too. You grumble and complain and such, and then you see somebody that's ten times worse off than you, and here they are, pledging along and whatever. It's like, oh, shame you, shame you. Oh, yeah, God, oh, he will shame you. It will and such there because we don't know, no. God has given me so much. I'm glad, you know, And we start thanking and we just go forward. and So, so don't don't be looking around and saying, yeah, this one, 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 this one. It's keeping the church back. The Bible says we're to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. You keep, you keep on keeping on. Just like uh, Joshua and Caleb, eventually they entered in. And they were around a bunch of, now they didn't leave. I want to make sure to put that in because you know what? There are a lot of times... You're in the right place, and you may say, nah, there's too many people here that this. There's too many people in a small bed and trying to wrap up in a little dinky blanky. No, it's time for me to find a church where people are stretching out in and such. That. No, no. It, it, it's, we all, well, you can't. If you're in a church that everybody stretch all in it, and it, they may be to a certain plateau or something like that there, and, or they, they may or they may be, they got all the goods, they look all good and all that, and they can quote scripture, and they, they but yet, they're chucked right full of pride and arrogance. And I've seen that too, you know, and such like that there. And uh, no, it's good to have a group that we can all kind of grow together. Pray that we grow together and such. And that we can enter in 
then there won't be that frustration and the misery sometimes that will keep just, ah, we're not seeing the soul saved, not seeing people, you know, baptized in the Holy Ghost. There's people that, what, they hear the message, hear the message, but no, nope, they're not that short bed, dinky blanky, you know, and such. Yeah, they're fine with that there. They want to continue to go with that. Oh, I know I had a, my, my brother-in-law, he's over six foot tall. I think he's 6'2", I think something like that. Over six foot in a way. And uh, there was a, a, uh, a spare bed when we went in the spare room in my in-law's place in PA. It come out, of, it was uh, my father-in-law's mother's bed. One of the, I don't know, either it was her bed or one of the beds that were in, and she lived in a trailer, I guess, if I remember right, or something, or a double wide, something like that. Back in the day, they used to have those trailer beds, specially made for trailers. <laughs> They weren't made for people six foot tall. They were made like, no, I, I slept in there and I was, I was fine. But even my small frame and such there, but my, sometimes I had to make sure to, I had to strategically position myself, I should say, and I was comfortable, fine. I can make it work. But it's better when I can really stretch out and not be worried about my head, man, because they had this uh, 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 Kind of a headboard there. There was a shelf, a bookshelf, and stuff. There, a little slide and things. There, you put books and store whatever in there and such. Well, anyway, so my brother-in-law there, he was he was down and he was doing something there at his father's place there where he had to spend the night. So he got into the spare room and they had that bed. They just they just got because uh, uh, my uh, father-in-law's mother passed away and. And some of the stuff that they, they got in the family that's distributed between the family and such. And he had the, one of the things was this bed they got. <laughs> Not really thinking of how small it is there and only certain people there. But, but my, my brother-in-law there and stuff there, he, he tried to take and sleep in that thing. His feet sticking out over the edge. His head's banging out. So, so what it did is it had that sliding on, on either end. It had a, a, a sliding uh, cubby with a sliding uh, door that you could slide open to get where you want, slide it shut. And then you had a hollowed out place you could put stuff. So finally, after banging his head against that, sticking his feet over the edge of the bed, he just took that, uh, uh, that, that door off. The, you know, it slid so side to side. So he just took that thing out, stuffed his pillow in there, and stuck his head in there and stuff like that there, made the snoring a little bit louder and such. But anyway... Uh, you know, he made it work and starts there for the best, but you know that. See, but he said, "Man, I was so miserable until I finally figured, hey, I'll just take that door off through there and shove my pillow in there, and that'll take and give me, you know, uh, uh, another eight, nine, ten inches there, whatever." And he was fine. Well, we need a bigger bed. First Corinthians three one and two, and it reads. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as carnal. As to babes in Christ, I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. If you read that all in, in, in context and everything, you'll see that these people are at a point in their Christian walk, they should have been able to take and handle it. They should have been. They, they should have been able. They should be eaten solid. The baby bottle should be gone. Solid food should be should be their diet, and he says, "Man, and you could see, it, it, you could, do you hear the frustration in Paul when he's when I read that, I I can see the the frustration that Paul has. Man, you know, I gotta give you milk because you can't bear the meat. Big bodies, they may all look and talk and do, and like I said." They're at every function. they help out. They'll do it. But when it comes right down to spirit, they're not. And the thing is, is that, they, one, they don't reproduce. And if they do reproduce, what are they going to reproduce? See? So there's got to be. We've got to have that bed big enough we can stretch out in and the, the wrap up, the blanket big enough to be wrapped up in. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 11, uh, Paul again, and he says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So there comes a time to put away that crib, put away that bed, put away that little blanket. There comes a time, because that's natural growth, that's natural maturity. 
when people see it's there again it's a choice god provides it but do you want to walk in that and some they don't because it requires more on this of the spirit and there is more of a demand see it may be more demand of your time a little more demand of your energy there is the 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 uh, attacks of the enemy get a little more acid they do I, I, i'm not going to candy coat it i'm not going to flower it all up and such there it, it's it, it you go and you get a bigger bed and a and a bigger blank guarantee that he hates that he wants to saw off a foot of your bed and he wants to take off there a few feet of your blanket and such like that and if you let him he will he don't want you to be able to stretch out. He don't because he knows you're dangerous when you get to that place. When you've got a bed that you can stretch out in and you've got a blanket that you can just wrap right up with Jesus and such there, that he fears that. He wants to keep you in that small bed and that little itty bitty dinky blanky. That's what he wants. But it's time to take and put that away. We could uh, take in Hebrews 6 and 1 in the Amplified. And this is, this is beautiful here. It puts it right out there nice. That's why I chose the Amplified. Therefore, let us get past the elementary stage in the teachings about Christ. There are some, they, they want to just, you know, they just want to sing the songs, Jesus loves me, this I know for the Bible tells me. That's a beautiful song, you know. But we got to get songs and hymns and things that, 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 that you know, it's got some substance to it. We got to go beyond that and, and the teaching that, that you're saved. And yes, I, you heard me speak about the grace, but we got to go, you know. We hear about, yes, you get saved and you need to be water baptized. We got to get beyond that. Not just that you need to be saved, not just to be baptized. You know, there are some, they just soon hear salvation messages and such week after week, even though the church is all saved. You know, they want it, you know, you, but you've got to go beyond. You got, but then it's going to require them to do some studying. Because I tell you, when you start getting some meat, if you just sit there and you go, yep, Pastor, or, or yep, Brother Rick, or James, or Sister Sue, uh, 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 you know, Anthony, okay, yeah, 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 okay. And that's all you do with it? Shame on you because you're, you're in that little bed and that little blanket. Because you are to prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. So you have an obligation. If you're in that bigger bed with that bigger blanket, there's an obligation that goes with that. Yeah. See, there's a lot of people that try to just swallow it, and but they don't take the time to process it at all. Yeah, they're still in that little bed. So, see, they really don't want the meat because it's going to require them. huh? Because you know what? The meat a lot of times is like, huh, huh really? It challenges you. Huh. I haven't heard it quite like that. That's good. I I don't know about that one. Uh, James, I don't know. I think, I don't know. Brother, I, boy, I, man. I, and guess what? I go home and I look at it and I go, man, that's good. That's good. That's a revelation. I got, praise God. And I'm excited about that. I just stretched out a little more in that bed. Because I was challenged, see. But a lot of times those, they're challenged. But then, no, they just toss it aside. They don't want it. They want the milk. They want the little bed. They want the little blankie. They're comfortable with that. So they really don't want the meat. Then you got those, they say they want the meat. But you know what? They, no. They'll still complain. They'll, you know, if they before say they need enough meat, you get more meat gets preached, then there'll be something else. And such that because they they really don't want the re there comes a responsibility there there is effort you got to apply yourself in Christianity see and we 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 just want to be able to come on Sunday okay preacher whoever it may be preach me happy just take and I want to have this really feel good and well preacher you didn't do it well well. I'm not all lost. I can count on the worship leader. Maybe he'll do it. Yeah, so the preaching didn't do it. Maybe, all right, Brother James, sing me happy. Oh, play a song that would just make me happy and feel good all over. 
Oh, man, man, he missed it. Oh, man, they're off. They're taking off. They just, you know, uh, they complain and they're miserable. Week after week, they're expecting this one to do it and that one to do it, you know, and you know, they're not taking. Really, they, they, they don't. It's there, but they're not taking that and chewing her up in good shape there and stuff there and making sure they're getting every bit of that nutrients there so they can grow out, stretch out in that bed. It's being provided. It's there, folks. We're blessed with a number of preachers that preach here and such there, and you can't tell me that the people in all aspects of their what Sometimes I put out there, and I know. Man, I, I got the bottles out there, and I'm doing a lot of bottle feeding this Sunday or something, you know? But then there's other times I got more steak than I'm tossing out there, and I, I enjoy that. I do, man, you know. But then you got those ones that just kind of, you know, and they just, or, you know, or they just, yeah, yeah they're just rather bored and such. There. They don't really want to, like, hmm, that's something I got to take home and chew on that some more. You know, oh. So, folks, time for a bigger bed, bigger blanket. Okay, it's time to wrap this up. Remember, complacency is not a good thing. Complacency is the death of a church. You get a church, they just get satisfied with the same old, same old, status quo, whatever. Oh, they got to, oh, the music sounds good and, Oh, the, the sermons, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, nothing challenging, nothing that convicts you, nothing that kind of stirs you and gets you a little upset. I tell you, from time to time, you get to get mad at the preacher. Well, whoever's delivering the message, if you don't get a little bit stirred from time to time, agitated, then I wonder, are you really listening to what the Spirit is saying? I don't know about you, but there's different ones that preach, and I say, I, you know, I wish they wouldn't have said that because now I'm accountable to that. And I'm the pastor, so I got to do something with that. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't know. I just, you know, hey, I, I'm just being transparent with you. I, hey, I, now, I, does that happen every time? No, but from time to time, and I, it's good. I need that. I need. I'd be bored stiff if I did. I, I enjoy getting challenged. Think about the grace of God. I appreciate that they, we have a number of ministers here. Because, you know, to be honest with you, if I had just listened to my own preaching over and over and over, I'd get kind of tired of it. I, I'm blessed because I get preached to from time. What Man, I'm blessed because I need it. I need it. I don't have it all together. There's a lot of these pastors, they'll, pre, they'll hardly ever have a guest speaker or anything. Man, it's their pulpit. They got it. They think they got it all. And I, I, I don't see how they do it. Well, they don't. Oh, they may take and put a cross there, but you know what? Their bed's pretty small and their blanket's pretty dinky. Oh, but they try to put it out there. That, no. But when they're out of the eyes, see, you know, they're, they're right back here in that little bed and trying to take and cover in that little blankie, you know, that great man or woman of God and stuff there. Is, you know, when you don't see them, you know, in such there. Truth be not, God knows. They can try to paint a good picture and whatever. We all need get that bed bigger and bigger, bigger blanket. And you know what it is? In the natural, your bed basically only goes so big, you know, and stuff. Like I said, you get the crib, the junior bed, and twin bed, full bed, queen bed, king size bed. California, I knew there was one bigger such there. All right, but. Is it? All right. There you go. There's one that. But then, okay, somewhere in it. But you know what? With God, there's no limit. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit, if I could use that phrase. I mean, it's no limit. It's up to you. Don't blame your pastor. Don't blame the leadership. Don't blame the worship leader. Hey, and here's one. I, I love this. This First Chronicles 4, 9, and 10. I love this here. Now, I just want to say this. This here is the going over the genealogies, and this, you know, so-and-so begat so-and-so, and they had so-and-so and begat, 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 begat. And I'll admit, when I first was saved and I got to the begats, and this one begat, I says, I'm going to begat that, Amen. you know. And I just, I, you know, and then 
every now and then I'd hear a sermon about something. And right in the middle, there are certain things. That I'm there, wow, where did they find that? Oh, it's right in the middle of the bagats. Well, this is one of those instances here. And man, it is powerful. So much that God interrupted the begatten and such there. And he made an emphasis of this one individual. He took time to pen this because this was one special individual, it was Jabez. Amen. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. <laughs> Why? Why was he? Why? Go? Oh, because this man right here really touched the heart of God. More honorable than his brother. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. <laughs> Could you imagine having a name Jabez that meant pain and sorrow, affliction, travail? You know, so a lot is in a name. So I believe, and a lot of times people lived out what their name that was given them. I believe things didn't come easy for Jabez. I believe there was a lot of travail in his life, but he did not let that stop him. He did not let his name, Jabez, pain, stop him. Pain and odd. Yes, I may be hurting. I may, I'll tell you what, certain things, you know, hurt. I, I got, and I'm believing God, oh, this, this elbow is getting, but you know what? I could just say, oh, it hurts, it hurts, and just not do nothing. How many times? You know, you may feel, yeah, but you just kind of, you got to do something. Sometimes you got to work through the pain, so to speak. I mean, there do comes a, a point where it becomes, you know, you're being an idiot, you know, and such there. You know, I don't expect a person to take and, you know, they're dragging a leg and stuff, and it's only hanging by threads. Oh, I'm going to just tough the pain. No. But, you know, there's some that says, oh, that, 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 that hurts too much, or I get a little stiff, so I won't do that. Well, you need to do more of that and such. You work through the pain and whatever. You get the blessing, the reward and such. It's like an athlete. They go through all that training and all through a lot of, a lot of pain. A lot of uh, is poured in for that prize. They're all, those athletes are working towards that prize and such. Like that. And we as Christians, we're to take and go, as, as the Apostle Paul says, press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. There's effort involved. And Jabez realized this, that he was willing to work through the pain and such there. And Jabez called on God, of the God of Israel. Called on God in the midst of his pain and such there. But he's not going to let his pain, he's not going to take it. Well, I can't do this because this. Well, God, I would do this, but I can't because of financial, because of my physical, uh, physical my, because of my age, because of my, uh, we are all these things. Then all right, then what you're doing is you're settling for a small bed and a little dinky blankie and such like that there. Oh, you could just take and get a bigger blanket and God will have you grow into that blanket and such like that there. Now I tell you, God, uh, uh, he says I'm a God that changes not. He's the same yesterday and forever. Praise God. And I'll tell you, if God has put in your heart, it don't matter. When you think of, 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 Moses, of Moses, as you think, think of uh, 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 Caleb, 80-some years old and such, he said, I want that mountain. Man, that's, of all places, he didn't say, okay, I'll take those in the plane there where I don't have to, 80-some years old, you know, I don't want to have to walk up that mountain. I don't want to, man, no way. No way. What a victory that must have been. Wow. Man slaying and watching those people there bounce down the hill and such there, that mountain, throwing them off the mountain and such there. Wow. You know, he believed big. I want that mountain. I want that mountain. He believed big beyond. You know, I'm sure there's something. Hey, Caleb. Uh, Caleb, listen. Why the mountain? You're 80-something years old. Come on. Here, we'll give you, you know, you just fight this little group over here. That's that. We understand. You're an old man. He didn't let that stop. And God, even at that age, get, that's supernatural, folks. That's just not. So God loves, you know, uh, 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 you know, with Abraham and Sarah having a child and they're well into the, beyond their, uh, uh, her uh, our, our barren ears. <laughs> wow. Man, big blanket, big bed. Now I'm telling you, believe in big. And see, we hear Jabez. He didn't 
let the pain and anything got to keep him back. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. <laughs> God, I'm tired of this bed. I want a bigger bed, God. Give me a bigger blanket. I'm tired of this small blanket. I'm tired of this bed. I'm tired of being, you know, saying, oh, because of my pain and this and that and the sufferings and turmoil and stuff. God, grant me a bigger bed. God, give me a bigger blanket. Broaden my territory. Enlarge my coast. Oh, see, when you get that kind of attitude, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me and that you will keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. He knows about pain. He knows about pain. Oh, that I would not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Right in the middle of the begats, this man here, wow. And he prayed a, such a bold prayer, he prayed. During the time when there was, a lot, well, you could see there was nobody else there praying prayers that was worthy to get penned in the Word of God like that. So a lot of times it's like, okay, God, if there was a few more people that had that kind of attitude, I'd be good. I, I, I could really grow and I could get a bigger bed. But uh, I don't see anyone out. Don't wait. He, Jabez didn't wait. He said, just enlarge my territory. Enlarge my ministry. Don't wait for the pastor. Don't wait for the elders. It's such like that here. This, don't let these four walls stop you. Amen. Folks, you've got a ministry, and your ministry's life, it goes beyond right here. Yes, you can get equipped. You can get a lot of things here to go out there, folks. Hey, uh, I can help set up there with uh, uh, Bible studies. Don't don't take like oh that's my I, I you know someone might say oh, I want my own church I want I'll tell you what you can have, what do you think a Bible study is, folks? I started there in Bingham years ago and stuff. That was my little congregation. I weren't ordained, weren't licensed, but didn't know anything about it. Didn't ever even really. Didn't know you really had to, you know, and stuff. Suppose, you know, you don't really. <laughs> but I was so just naive and young and ignorant, I guess, there, you know. And they, oh, and then someone says, you know, you should really get licensed. You should get ordained. And, you know, I started working towards it. But, you know, that didn't stop me. I still, I still, man, my cries, I want, I want a bigger bed. I didn't want to stay in a little baby bed. And what a blessing that was. There's ministry out there. All the while sitting under the mentoring of pastors and still went outside of that church and did ministry. I'll tell you, Brother Jerry uh, knew the Blodgett family for, for years, and they were in a uh, ministry that seen some powerful things and such take place, whether it be in the tent or within the church or in any some other building and such like that here. But you know what? Brother Jerry didn't minister just in the four walls or within the skirts of the tent. Everywhere he went, that ministry. And that's what I, I love because, man, he's a, big, he's a big man. He needs a big bed. But he wasn't satisfied with just, I loved that. That's why I love being around people like that that pray like Jabez. Because guess what? It sparks something in me and gives me a desire. Oh, God, grant me a bigger bed. Grant me a bigger covering that I can wrap myself right up in. Are you satisfied with the bed you're in right now? I hope not. I pray that you pray as Jabez, enlarge my coast, enlarge my territory. Each of us have got a ministry. Don't, don't just don't blame it. Oh, I'm not doing, you know, the pastor. Hey, come, come talk, not just with me. Not just sit down with the board. Sit down. Let us, because we're, we're here to, don't just strike off on your own. And I, the Bible says safety comes, uh, uh, there's uh, safety in a multitude of counsel. Consider your elders. Ask your elders, and they showed it. This is all scripture. 
Consider the years of many generations. I mean, these are things you've got to don't ever, ever, I, believe me, I've been there. I've struck out before and stuff there without the counsel, without... I've had to learn through hard knocks. Let my hard knocks and such like that. Let me be able to. And there's others on our board and such a bit. Let let us. So I encourage anybody that that if you feel you're not being used to the capacity, let us know. Don't just get discouraged and strike off and such there. Let us know because believe me, there's more vision. There there's more vision than I, than I've been. It's big. Folks, it's big, and I will share little by little. And as you come to me, and if you got, hey, believe me, I'll start sharing it with you, personal, one-on-one. -on -one. And you can take that vision, and you can take it and run with it, hear it, and run with it. And you'll have the support. Praise God for everybody. Father, I just take and thank you. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray that we don't get content with a little itty-bitty bed and a little itty-bitty blanket comes a time we've got to put away those childish things. It's time for that big bed, and that big old blanket. Wrap ourselves up in Jesus, that great covering. Hallelujah. Covering, saturated, the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus, and that we go from glory to glory. I thank you, Lord Jesus. So I pray as we continue on that we, Lord, will worship you, praise you, and that we will lay our hearts bare that we would desire, that we would pray that prayer, Jabez. Oh, enlarge our coast. Enlarge my territory. Oh, God, may your hand be upon me. Bless me. Bless me. And may I not grieve any and such there, but may I be a, a, a blessing as you bless me, oh, God. Hallelujah. Amen. That little change of of uh, set list just now, so we don't have the words. But it's okay. You guys know them. I give you glory for all you've brought me through, and now I'm ready. I'm moving forwards to follow after you, and now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like has been enough and I'm believing that the best is yet to come the cross before me my hope on things above and in you Jesus the best is yet to come your presence Yeah. 
Sounds a lot like the message we just heard. Amen. Hallelujah. Weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't. Cause the God I serve knows only how to try you. My God will never fail. Yes, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Cause I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this story ends. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the
So I'm not backing down from any giant For I know how this story ends Yes, I know how this story ends Hallelujah Give God praise this morning, church Hallelujah, Lord he is so worthy of our praise. You know, sometimes we don't feel like praising, and that's when we should praise him the most. You know, David David was a man that was acquainted with sorrow. How many times did he cry out from a cave or from the wilderness or from a place where he was feeling downtrodden or, you know, under a persecution or threat of death? But he still wanted to praise God. He wanted to please God. And that's, and that's where we need to be. Is No matter our circumstance, we just are so grateful for what he does for us. I'm caught up in your presence. We have the words for this one, Anthony. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Because I'm not here for blessing. Don't owe me anything Cause more than anything that you can do I just want you I just want you And nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do. I just want you, and nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Cause I'm not here for blessings. Don't owe me anything Cause more than anything that you can do I just want you So I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry when I just sang another song to take me back to where we started, I open up my heart to you. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song to take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda I'm sorry when I've forgotten you're enough take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you
Cause I just want you And nothing else And nothing else No, nothing else will do I just want you And nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do I'm caught up in your presence Cause I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Cause I'm not here for blessings Oh Jesus Cause Jesus you don't Is more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you know. In the youth group this past week we were we were talking about Christmas and we're working on a skit. Um, to do before Christmas. Um, and when I was talking to the kids, we were talking about the meaning of Christmas and, and you know, how it was a, originally a pagan holiday and, and about Christmas trees and, and all this, all these different things. And, but the main thing is, regardless of the day, regardless of the holiday, there was a gift that was given to mankind. And that was the greatest gift ever given. It came in the lowliest of forms to have the greatest victory the world would ever know. Wrapped in rags and laid in a feed trough, the humblest of beginnings for the greatest champion that walked with the most humility and I can't imagine being the shepherds in the field that night that God sent his angels to proclaim the birth of his son. And here we are over 2,000 years later, and he's still the greatest gift. And he's still the greatest champion. The question is, do you know him as such? What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping whom angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping this this is Christ the King whom shepherds God and angels sing Haste, haste to bring him love The babe, the son of Mary Why lies he in such mean estate Where ox and ass are feeding Good Christian fear for sinners here. The silent word is pleading. Nails spears shall pierce him through. The cross be born for me, for you. Hail, hail the word made flesh, the babe, the son. Mary. 
so bring him incense, gold and myrrh, come peasant king to own him, the king of kings, salvation brings that loving hearts enthrone. sings her lullaby joy joy for Christ is born the babe the son of Mary this this is Christ the king whom shepherds guard and angels sing the babe, the son of Mary. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for that gift. Lord God, we thank you that you look down from your righteousness and you saw a world that you had made in splendor had gone away from what you had intended. And you decided instead of in wrath destroying it to love us enough to send us a gift to redeem us, a perfect lamb, Lord God, you came down and it was always tempted and tried like as we are, but without sin. Lord, may we exemplify that love, not just in this holiday season, but Lord God, every day. Let us live like Christmas is every day. Let us live like Christ died and rose again and is victorious every day so that we truly might become the sons of God, so that we truly could stretch out on the bed, so that we would welcome growth and welcome change because you only give good things and we should want to please you. So Lord God, we ask that you would help with the growing pains. Lord God, that you would, God, you know what you're doing. Let us seek your will that we might walk in it. You know the plans you have for us. Lord God, let us accept those plans and make them, Lord God, the desire of our heart. Because those plans, Lord, you told us they're not to hurt us, but to give us hope and a future and to make us prosper. So Lord God, I ask that you would Give us the grace and the mercy, Lord God, to let the things go that we need to remove from our lives, that we might truly grow, that when meat comes, we'll set up to the table. Lord God, that when, when change comes, we'll welcome it. Because, Lord God, the Holy Spirit was sent to lead and guide us into all truth. So we thank you. We give you glory and praise and honor because it's due unto you. Help us, Lord God, this week to go and serve you, Lord God, and to make a difference in the world around us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.